What if Buzz and Woody never made it home? What if that fateful stop at Dinoco gas station was the last stop for the story that we've all come to know? What if our favorite sheriff's most dominant fear of becoming a lost toy actually became a permanent reality? <laughs> we don't talk about that one. Anyway, how would things change in such a case? Would Woody and Buzz still become best friends? Would Buzz ever get his life-changing reality check? Could the two of them survive such a harsh lifestyle, or would they crumble to pieces? What would become of Andy? What would become of his other toys? What about Sid, Jesse, Bullseye, Al, Pete, the aliens, Lotso, the Sunnyside Gang, Bonnie and her toys? All the characters we've come to know over the course of three movies and a myriad of shorts. Well, as a die-hard fan of the Plastic Protags and their toy-based tales, I consider myself the perfect person to unbox this alternate universe concept and play around with its possibilities. My name is Dr. Box, and I shall be your guide through this plane of existence in the animation multiverse. Let's start off by rewriting some of the events in the first Toy Story film. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're as big of a TS fanboy as I am, meaning you're already familiar with the events of the first movie, but just in case, let me do a quick recap for you. This kid is named Andy. His favorite toy is Woody. One day he gets filled with dread when a toy takes a spot on his owner's bed. Eventually some jealousy is bred. Yeah, Woody, you're so jelly. Yeah, Woody, you're so jelly. He comes up with a plot to get Buzz out of the way so we can go to Pizza Planet. But out the window we flew. Oopsie, then Woody goes, but Buzz caught up and then his top blew. You freaking screwed, boy. Out of the door they fly. The car drives away, bye bye. And this is where things start diverging from the norm. So I'm gonna stop singing now. So after Andy's car is long gone, Buzz and Woody have another scrap. Buzz convinces me that his creators ripped off Star Wars. Woody screams his iconic line, which thankfully nobody was around to hear. But in this version, their barely legal ride to Pizza Planet does not happen. In the original, the guy driving the truck makes a stop for directions, and the gas worker takes a while to give them to him, allowing the duo to climb aboard. In this new version, however, the guy still stops for directions, and it gives Woody enough time to explain his whole spaceship ruse to Buzz, but this time the gas worker tells the driver where to go a lot quicker, leading to the driver rocketing out of the gas station right before Buzz and Woody can get inside. Woody sees this as yet another hopeless situation, but Buzz, being the knowledgeable tactician that he is, says that they can track the vessel by following the residue it left behind during its lightspeed travel. AKA the skid marks it left on the ground. I mean, look at the way this dude drives and the way his tires screech against the pavement. There's no way he didn't leave some kind of tracks on that road. However, Buzz also notes that traveling on foot without a ship could be very dangerous as they'd be more vulnerable to enemies. They are in luck since it is the middle of the night and it's much less likely that people will see them, but they both agree to duck in cover if they do see a car coming down the road. Or heck, if you want to borrow something from the original movie that we'd miss, maybe some of those empty cups and containers actually flew out of the back of the Pizza Planet truck as it took off, since we know the guy driving left the back window open, and they decide to use those for cover. Woody, what are you doing? Yeah, this is my new pack. Anyway, they follow the trail the best they can, Buzz's Space Ranger lingo continues to get on Woody's last nerve, but once they reach the top of the hill that the truck goes up, which would obviously take a while to climb, they come face to face with some kind of multi-lane intersection, or a busy town street, or a highway, basically something with a lot of cars going every which way, meaning they inevitably lose the PP pee -pee trail, they have no method of reaching Andy now, and they're even more lost than they were before, meaning this is pretty much where the story as we know it completely stops. So, roll credits! Now, I'm not about to write a full-fledged script for Toy Story 2, Buzz and Woody get screwed, because honestly, pretty much anything could happen from this point onward. But as far as the duo's potential partnership is concerned, there are a few avenues that I could see happening. For example, it is possible that both of them split up and go their separate ways, you know, diverging goals and all that. Woody wants to try and make it back to Andy, and Buzz wants to try and track down that runaway spaceship. And yeah, Woody did say that he can't show his face in that room without Buzz, and if he does show up without him, the toys will probably toss him in the gallows with a yo-yo string around his neck. That's me, I'm on a yo-yo. 
but he figures that it's better to be there for Andy with some toy torture than to just wander the streets for the rest of his life. However, because both locations are a good distance away and neither of them have any clue where they're going, honestly, they both end up as lonesome lost toys with no companions to speak of. Andy's already moved away, Buzz assumes that the spaceship must have already taken off, so they have no choice but to live off the land, hoping and dreaming that one day they can reach the homes they've been searching for for so long. And that, boys and girls, is what we call the bad end. But I feel like there could be a scenario where things still work out for the two of these guys, despite never making it home. In this instance, they both decide to stay together. Woody figures that Buzz may be a psychopath, but he does at least have some handy survival skills like tracking that could help them out if they end up stuck for a while. He also knows strength in numbers is important, plus if he keeps an eye on Buzz, there's less risk of him making some kind of mistake and exposing toy kind to the humans. So they reluctantly team up. After many failed attempts to follow the spaceship and or make it back to Andy's place, they both start to accept their current situation and even throw in the towel temporarily. This puts them both in a similar state of hopelessness, where they start to think that they'll never make it back to their respective homes. It'd be kind of similar to the somber scene between the two of them at Sid's place, except in this case, Buzz never got his heroic blue screen of death moment, meaning he's still on his whole Space Ranger kick at this point. Obviously, Woody has been extremely annoyed by Buzz the entire time he's been around him, but now that they're both in the same dour mood, the same tragic situation, with literally nothing but each other, his anger begins to quell and he starts to realize that Buzz isn't doing any of this intentionally, he's just got these delusions of grandeur that are bigger than himself, and he can't really help the fact that he thinks he's the savior of the galaxy. He's been a real jerk to a guy that honestly doesn't deserve it. He'd say something like, Hey, um... I haven't really been the best listener lately. Could you tell me again about this whole Star Command thing? Buzz would then explain his entire mission in detail as Woody listens closely. Then Buzz would return the question and ask Woody what his life story is. And Woody would tell Buzz about his special adventures with Chief Andy. How he cared for him during the day and protected him at night. You know, basically making toy stuff sound like important missions in order to speak Buzz's language. Buzz would then commend Woody for being so selflessly dedicated to his job like that. And Woody actually takes this opportunity to ask Buzz a hypothetical question. Let's say that he wasn't a space ranger. He didn't have the fate of the whole galaxy on his plate, and instead, he was just in charge of keeping a single person safe and happy, just like he does with Andy. Would he be okay with that? Buzz thinks this is a bizarre scenario to bring up since it obviously would never happen, but he does tell Woody that in such a case, he would handle the mission with just as much dedication as his current one. And Woody says that's nice to know. From that point on, they start growing close and looking out for each other. Woody never truly gets over Andy, which you would expect since his loyalty is freaking bottomless, and he always holds out that little tiny bit of hope that maybe he'll run into him one day. And while Buzz never got his big reality check at Sid's house, it's possible that he could still get a similar one while they're on the road. Like maybe they see multiple Buzz toys in a toy store, or they see the same commercial on a different TV. Obviously, this is a massive reality-shattering blow to Buzz's mind, just like in the original story, but at least this time, Woody is able to help him through it a lot easier. He reminds Buzz of the conversation they had the night they first became friends, and eventually, Buzz does agree that even if his purpose isn't to be a galaxy-wide savior, he'll always have something that gives his existence value. He'll always be important to someone. And whether that someone is his best friend while they're on their journeys, or maybe a future kid if they're lucky enough to find another one, he'll be satisfied knowing that Buzz Lightyear always makes a difference in someone's life. So yeah, best case scenario, these two actually turn out okay in the end. But the same can't really be said for most of the side cast. Yeah, we can't forget that Buzz and Woody's absence would definitely affect some other notable characters. So let's go movie by movie and see what would become of our favorite toys and toy owners. Oh, uh, boy, this is gonna hurt. I think it's undeniable that Andy would be pretty bummed out that his two-star toys are now gone forever. And trust me, I know exactly how it feels to lose your favorite playthings. And it ain't pretty. When he moves to that new house, there's gonna be many a sad playtime in the future for the poor kid, with plenty of situations where he just knows that something important is missing. Now you could say that Andy's mom could go for the whole Daisy and Lotso solution of just getting Andy a new Woody and Buzz, which in theory would be problem solved, but the main caveat with that plan would be product availability. Woody is an old brand of toy. Like tennis ball walker eating prunes out of the can, watching Andy Griffith show reruns levels of old. And considering how highly sought after he was by collectors like Al, there's no way Andy's mom would be able to find a replacement for anything other than a small fortune. 
Now finding a new buzz would be just as easy as finding sand in your shorts at the beach, but a second share of Shawoody Woody? Yeah, not likely. However, like all things, I imagine he'd eventually get over it and move on with his life. Heck, maybe losing his two best buds might actually inspire him later down the road. Like when he first enters his college years, he might want to volunteer at a daycare, or do toy drives in his spare time, or get a part-time job at a toy store. You know, help kids get acquainted with their own childhood companions. He may have lost his favorite toys at a young age, but the time he spent with them really made him realize the positive impact that a child-toy relationship can bring to someone's life. So he takes time out of his schedule to ensure that other kids can form a special bond with a toy just like he did, while making sure to tell them to keep a sharp eye on their toys as they have a habit of getting lost really easily. He'd definitely be sad at first, but I think Andy's gonna turn out okay. Well, if Woody was gone for good, I think we all know how Bo would be affected. In the same way that Andy would lose his toy, Bo would lose her boy toy. Yup, no one to kiss her under the missiles or gawk at her porcelain figure, so that's a shame. I imagine she'd be hung up for a little while, along with being concerned for Andy's well-being since she knows how much he misses Woody. But then she gets donated before the third movie, and we never see her again. Moving on! Aw, hey there, little guy. Could you step aside for a second? I'm trying to do the next entry on this list, so... Ugh, fine. Then she gets donated before the third movie, goes through all the tribulations of lamp life, becomes a lost toy, and travels the world with Polly Police Pocket and her sheep that are named after goats for some reason. Yeah, it's honestly not even worth mentioning the fourth movie for Bo, since nothing would really change for her there. She'd still become independent, she'd still end up traveling the world via carnival. The only thing that would change is that Woody wouldn't accompany her by the end of the film. Maybe if all the planets aligned during a solar eclipse on a leap year, Woody, Buzz, and Bo could actually meet up since they're all lost toys at this point, but that would require more luck and convenience than every event in the fourth movie combined. So yeah, aside from having her fragile little heart broken, which I'm sure she'll get over eventually, very little would change for Bo Peep in the end. Andy's other toys? Oh yeah, they're, they're dead. Yeah, I was hoping for something more optimistic or at least neutral like the other two, but nope, dead. I mean, come on, we all know that Buzz and Woody were instrumental in the preservation of Andy's other toys in most cases. And if they were out of the picture and certain events proceeded as normal, well, we can only assume the worst for these guys. When the other toys get the news that both Buzz and Woody are missing now, they'd pretty much react the same as they did in the first movie. Potato Head and Ham would believe that their assumptions were correct. Woody was a murderer, and he ran away with his pull string between his legs. Rex would also submit to the idea that Woody was guilty, even if he was kind of on the fence at first. Honestly, the only toy that would hold out hope for Woody besides Bo would be Slink. Slink's a good boy. He pretty much trusted Woody till the absolute bitter end. Heck, he was the final one to shut the blinds on him only after he was given solid proof of Woody's malicious intentions. Or at least, what they thought was proof. I'm not saying that we'd get a whole Jurassic Bark situation where Slink would stare out the window of the new house every day and night just praying that somehow Woody would make it home, but I'm not saying we wouldn't. Anyway, moving on to the second film, if Woody never came home, then Al would have never stolen him from the yard sale, meaning the big rescue mission to save him would have never needed to happen, and the toys would probably just chill around the house while Andy went to cowboy camp. Which basically means that the grand majority of Toy Story 2 just wouldn't happen. And that really sucks, because that's my favorite movie in the series. Oh man. The only noteworthy thing is that Wheezy would have still been taken to the garage sale, but with no one to rescue him this time, he would have never made it back to Andy's room. So best case scenario, he gets bought and maybe restored, and worst case scenario, he gets thrown out and he's dead. Now, if we look at Toy Story 4, don't worry, we'll get to three in a second, another toy that would be sent up the river, literally in this case, would be RC. Yeah, remember Operation Pull Toy from the start of that movie? Well, if Woody and Buzz weren't there to coordinate and participate in the plan, there's no way they'd be able to save their beeping buddy in time. So yeah, sorry RC, your batteries are dead, and so are you. When you're down here with me, you float down. Finally, we have Toy Story 3, and this is where the bulk of Andy's toys would meet one of two tragic fates. Things would play out normally at first, Andy would still keep his chest of childhood chums after all these years, they'd give up on the likelihood that Andy will ever play with them again, even without the whole cell phone mission, Andy would put them in a trash bag to prep them for the attic, the plot would shut the attic door on them, Mom would throw them out by accident, but this time, without Buzz to formulate the plan involving Rex's tail, it's unlikely that the toys would actually think of a way of escaping the bag. 
This means they pretty much be stuck in there until the trash guy tosses them in the garbage truck, pulls the lever, and, well, I think you know what's gonna happen next. Totality. However, just for variety's sake, let's say that somehow they actually do manage to escape from the bag. Like, maybe Rex accidentally pokes a hole through the bag with his tail. Like how he accidentally defeated Zerg with his tail in the second movie. In this case, they'd all make it out okay. They'd probably still happen upon the Sunnyside daycare box in the back trunk, even without Jesse pointing it out. They'd hop in, meet the locals, get enough playtime to last a lifetime, and ultimately discover, via Mrs. Potato Head, that Andy actually does care about them after all. I mean, yeah, she first discovers her binocular vision when she was looking under the door for Buzz, but honestly, this probably could have happened at any point in the movie. I don't think it needed to be Buzz-specific. Anyway, they try to leave for Andy's place, Lotso catches them red-handed, locks them up in their cages, and I think that's about it. They'd just be stuck in there. Woody would have never talked to Phone Guy, he never would have formulated the plan or told them about the monkey, so any escape attempt that they could have come up with would have been over before it started. Unless they somehow figured out all that info themselves, which is unlikely, but possible, I guess? At the very least, they wouldn't be jail toys forever, since Lotso does give newbies access to the butterfly room once they've done their time. So if they can survive a few years of toddler torture, they could technically be on Easy Street for the rest of their lives afterwards. They'd be a little worse for wear and rough around the edges, sure, but at the very least they can look forward to child cuddling and see and say roulette, so that's a plus, right? So yeah, either multiple years in prison with seniority privileges if they survive, or death. Pick whichever one you want. I don't really care since both of them are equally pretty sad. Oh, and speaking of sad, we can't forget about these three cowpokes. <laughs> Okay, you know what's coming. If Woody never showed up to Al's apartment, he never would have met the trio, meaning he never would have convinced Jesse and Bullseye to come home with him, meaning they never would have become Annie's toys, meaning they would still be waiting in storage for their day of reckoning to come. I guess that's a good thing in Stinky Pete's case, since he's just a big old stinky face, but for Jesse and Bullseye, that's such a huge shame. Bullseye is best boy, he doesn't deserve to be surrounded by styrofoam for the rest of his life. He deserves pets and rides and all the hugs in the world. And if Jessie never made it to Bonnie's place, then obviously Toy Story of Terror never happened, meaning she never got over her claustrophobia. So she'd be forced to spend what'll likely be years in a cardboard prison that she is completely mortified to be in. I guess it's not impossible for another Woody doll to show up, preferably one that doesn't still have an owner, but the show did air in the 50s, and the Woody toy is apparently the creme de la creme of the whole collector set. So yeah, Al ain't getting his hands on a Woody unless he's willing to fork over a few hundred thousand at least. It's kinda ironic that Woody's roundup ended on an episode with Jesse and Pete trapped in a dark confined space, and unless their savior Woody arrives one day to break them out, they're either gonna be trapped for a long time, or just wind up exploding from the pressure and being buried by the rocks of crushing loneliness. Okay, talking about this AU is starting to get depressing now, so let's just do a lightning round of some of the minor characters I missed so we can move on to something happier next time. Sounds good? Alright, let's go. Without the toys putting Sid through their Scared Straight program, I imagine that he would continue to torture and murder toys to his heart's content for at least a few more years. Some people say that Sid's behavior as a child kind of plants the seeds for a future serial killer, but his mom doesn't seem to be super concerned about it, so it's possible that this is just a weird, edgy phase that he'll eventually get over. Al's life? Honestly, wouldn't change all that much. He'd still have his toy empire, he'd still have his fancy caw, he'd still have his stupid last name and his nearly complete collection, and he'd still be spending his free time perusing yard sales, antique stores, and eBay to find a genuine Woody doll to make him millions. Heck, if anything, he'd actually get to keep his dignity in this version, since he never showed up to Japan with an incomplete set, and he didn't have to convert his places into dollar stores. Not necessarily a happy ending, but at least a... neutral ending, I guess? Lotso would still be running Sunnyside with a strawberry-scented fist, and he wouldn't end up tied to the front of a garbage truck, accidentally swallowing extras from a bug's life. Simple and concise. I'm hoping they land somewhere other than Sunnyside this time, cause it ain't very sunny in this timeline. Oh boy. If the Woody rescue mission never happened, then these three would have never met Potato Head and never would have been adopted by the missus. So they'd probably still be hanging out on the rearview mirror of this guy's pee-pee truck. 
Barbie's fate would pretty much be the same as Andy's toys. Molly would still throw her in the donation bin, she'd end up at Sunnyside with the others, she'd meet up with Ken, he'd tell Barbie, let's go party, she'd discover that they're locking up her friends, and she'd end up in the Hooskow just like them. Ken might take pity on her at some point and maybe even offer to set her free, but I doubt she'd agree to go with him unless he releases all of her friends as well, which is never gonna happen. Oh well, I guess it's Splitsville for these two. Oh, screw you, Ken! Woody would have never thrown the craft supplies up to Bonnie, meaning this little spork face would have never been made in the first place. Honestly, this change would spare us all from the worst movie in the franchise, and it would also spare the Pixar theorists a lot of confusion and headaches, so it's a win-win for all of us. And finally, we have the character, which I actually think would have the least amount of change in this alternate reality. Obviously, if not for Woody and Buzz helping the toys escape from Sunnyside, they would have never made it to Bonnie's house, but would that really affect her all that much? She was really happy and carefree playing with her original toys before Andy made his donation, and I imagine that if he never showed up, she'd still be living the exact same kind of life, with the only difference being that she'd have less toys to play with. Yes, it is true that the Toy Story gang had a lot of fun with Bonnie, they made her much happier than she would have been otherwise, and there are certain pivotal moments in her life, like the creation of Forky that they had a direct hand in, but aside from that, I honestly think Bonnie's life wouldn't change that much if Woody, Buzz, and the rest of the gang weren't in it. She'd just be having fun in her little pretend cafe, eating her plastic jelly bean hamburgers. Blissfully unaware of the tragic fates that have befallen our other favorite characters in this alternate plane of reality. Well, that wasn't exactly the happiest alternate universe ever created, but I guess things could have been worse for some of them. Oh well, I'm gonna go watch Lightyear this weekend and hopefully cheer myself up. But before I go, what do you guys think? Could you see Buzz and Woody surviving out in the world on their own? Should I explore more alternate universes like this one in the future? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.